what is it? It seems like Tuesday, the news day. I still don't have no lips for y'all. But it's Tuesday and I'm gonna rap with y'all. Cause it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. What's up, what's up, what's up with it? I don't know, I don't get it. I'm back up in this thing, I made it. Yeah, I was back again. I have still nothing, my friend. Nothing out the dome. It's not rolling like. Anyway, what's up with y'all? I'm back. And I'm in a better mood today. I was in a funk yesterday. And you know what? It is okay to be in a funk sometimes. It's human nature. Like, which is okay. It's okay to have a bad day. But I woke up today in a really good mood. Um, and, and that's cool, too. Good or bad, we're still here. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. No, y'all, I was in a better mood today, and it's spring forward this weekend, which I love spring forward. Oh my gosh. I hate it, fall back. We made it through fall back. We made it through. So the light is in the, in the tunnel. Spring is springing soon, anyway. So that gave me a little encouragement. And just, you know, I'm in better spirits today. Um, I'm still doing my keto. This is day, this is week two of keto. Although my husband, he did buy me some keto ice cream today. I told him there's no such thing as keto ice cream, but I ate a bar. I ate a bar of keto ice cream. It was good. Uh, it didn't make me one sweets, but I just don't really know. Um, I don't know how that goes, but, uh, it was good. I had that shout out to my husband who was always trying to support me in some kind of way. He had real ice cream though, with a lot of chocolate on it. He swears he's going to work it out in the gym, but we'll see. Uh, let's turn the violin down a lot. In the back, I can't keep competing with the violin, man. Uh... Yeah, I'm back to my goofy self today. What did I do today? I worked out at home. I also love working out at home, even though it started raining on me, so I had to pack. I was outside for a little bit. It started raining. Packed it up, went inside, then it stopped raining. Don't you hate that? It's like I should have just stayed out there. But no, I had a cool, sweet little day. Um, Hung out with my love, watched some TV shows, and just... You know, hung out with him before he goes back to work tomorrow. So, yeah, hung out with my fat dog, and we just chilled, and that's how I love it. Uh, But, yeah, we back up in this thing, and like I said, everybody has bad days, but we back. Feel good today. Um, Let's get into this news. Trump wins North Dakota. It's not shocking. Uh, Supreme Court temporarily blocks a Texas law that allows police to arrest migrants. Eagle star Jason Kelsey announces his retirement from the NFL. He was crying. Oh, to be able to do what you love in life. Bitcoin surges to a new record high as mainstream money flows into crypto. Still ain't messing with it yet. This man, I've been seeing his face everywhere. He's a married Christian coach accused of abusing a teen basketball player. He looks psycho. Like, look at this man. Would you let him coach your children? I don't think so. I love my name until Amazon ruined it. I'm assuming her name is Alexa. I'm assuming that. Fentanyl still crippling states. Sinead O'Connor's estate asked Donald Trump to stop using the late artist song immediately. He does it every campaign, don't he? Let's see what else we got going on. Oh my gosh, a tourist camping with her husband is gang raped in India. Hey. A woman fatally stabs convicted sex offender who tried to attack her at a Louisiana laundromat. So, let's look into this. Let's see. First, we have...
have to turn down these dang on ads. Because why wouldn't we? I don't even know if this is an ad. Some Trump commercial. Here, let's let's mute this anyway. Hold on. Anyway. A twice convicted sex offender was stabbed to death at a laundromat in Louisiana by a woman he was allegedly trying to assault. According to authorities, the incident happened around 3.30 p.m. on Sunday, March 3rd, after deputies was dispatched. And I thought that was... Is this his... Oh, I guess that's his mugshot. Because I was like, I know that's not the lady's mugshot. She was able to gain possession of the weapon and use it to stab him. Thank goodness she was able to take him out. Rihanna, Mark Zuckerberg, and Ivanka Trump among the bevy of stars in an Indian billionaire heir's pre-wedding bash. This dude is clearly rich that he got Rihanna to perform. Like, clearly rich. They're saying that Taylor Swift is related to the famous poet Emily Dickinson. And now it all makes sense. Over 10 feet of snow in Tahoe brings snowfall snowfall totals above average for the March blizzard. Let's see. Let's see what this is. I'll bite. I order online. They can't say no. McDonald's customer gets told ice cream machines are broken, so he lies and says he's a secret shopper. It's a recurring complaint, blah, blah, blah. TikToker Hannah Grace, along with her partner, decided to try and get the bottom of the, of the whole thing. She documented her attempted viral clip after she accrued 563,000 views. Unfortunately, we can't do McFlurries. Our ice cream's down. They put the machine back together wrong or something. Every time we try to go make it, it doesn't work, the worker says. And says, okay, I can mark that down. Who's the manager on duty? Samantha, an employee states. Samantha replies before coming that the issue is an actual problem with the machine before driving away in Carson. Several comments stated that due to the terminology the TikTok you use and the spill the McDonald's employees, it was clear that he has zero managing experience. I'm a secret shopper, corporate regional manager. Tell me you've never worked any level of management without actually telling me one user wrote. Another person also has had a rep with the fake persona. So pretty much their, their spiel didn't work. Let's see. Customer answers a phone at, at Walmart because there were no workers around, and it was just ringing, which is not shocking. Um, after answering the phone, he placed the inside players inside the players' dormitory and winning food. McDonald's, as Sif was asked, tasked convincing a fellow contestant to pick up the phone with him in order to avoid elimination. Bro can't leave a single phone alone. You think he had learned from the last time another greed? So he answered the phone, nothing happened. The feral kid from Mad Max is 48. I don't know if y'all remember Mad Max Beyond the Terra Dome with Tina Tana. But uh, that dude's 48. I'm old. So Outback has some impossible steak. And the viewers are suspicious of the steak. Let's see. That 
looked bad. That looked that did look like that bread they serve. It was literally the same consistency. It was hard as a rock. Why would you want to go to Outback and order a fake steak? Just eat a salad. I mean, I get vegan people or whatever, but mm, it just really ain't worth it. Uh, let's see what else is on this thing. Some random woman was in his... This Amazon worker found this random woman in his van. Hold on the hoodie, lady. Can you, can you get out? Can you get out of the van, bro? Bro, hold on the hoodie. Bro, hold on the hell you there, bro. You gonna get out, please? Can you please... Can you please give me a ride down the street, bro? Down the street? Shopper says she has no room for her groceries at her self checkout. Which I agree, that self checkout is like it's not enough. Yeah, that's what we'll do in the car. And I'm running into this problem right here at the Walmart checkout. I have a cart full of groceries and I check out they never i don't know what they were thinking it was gonna be for people that was only chart uh, grabbing a few items but it's clearly not enough room for if you're doing some serious shopping you almost need two bag two uh carts because yeah that little space i don't know i don't even know if they can revamp them and make them bigger honestly i think they're still i don't know hoping people buy less or something it's weird American Airlines workers uh, trash is people that leave trash on the plane. Look, man, I pay all that for that seat. You gonna take this trash, okay? I mean, I normally throw mine away, but I might leave a, a water bottle. I ain't gonna lie. This 
women try to order a plan B on Uber Eats because they do deliver that now. The driver refused to deliver it and asked her to reconsider. Wow. This girl says she caught Chick-fil-A scamming her with the mac and cheese. I hate Chick-fil-A. Like, why would y'all want Chick-fil-A mac and cheese, even though people like it? But let's see. I'm crazy. I love Chick-fil-A mac and cheese. I don't care. Do I have this conspiracy that they copied a soul recipe somewhere in the world? Yes. There's going to be a lot of people watching this like, girl, that is not soul mac and cheese. I am also half white. So that might explain it. Anyway, they have three sizes for mac and cheese. Small medium family size i get medium they always charge you for a medium and then they just give you a small serving anyway you see this arrow that arrow like on the little indent that's where the mac and cheese is supposed to end it's it's not that big of a deal but the medium is five dollars it's either five or six dollars i'm like so you're gonna you're gonna charge me six dollars for a whisper of mac and cheese they are way past shrinkflation now they're just being disrespectful Good God, what is this? Am I being ridiculous? They're gonna say the moisture melted it. Oh, I still don't know why y'all like mac and cheese at freaking Chick-fil-A, but I know a lot of people that like it. Alright, let's see what else is in this crazy news. Donald Trump isn't the only Trump of the criminal history. Here's why his dad, Fred, was arrested. And I don't really care. I don't care enough. start giving out Ozempic at the gym now to combat gym memberships. They're going to like uh, keep people coming to the gym. They're going to have their own doctors that can tr- prescribe Ozempic to people. They're trying anything because supposedly Ozempic is like people are losing so much weight they ain't even going to the gym no more. I guess that could be a good thing, huh? It's a good sign. You have to wonder with everybody on Ozempic and stuff, what is what is gonna go, what is gonna be going on? Like you know, the side effects of long term. Always think about that. And will people just start eating smaller serving sizes now that? Everybody is on Ozempic. Maybe those small self checkouts will come in handy after all. Maybe it all makes sense now. So this was a sad story. Um, this poor little thirteen year old girl, uh, Madeline Soto, who disappeared and died. The sheriff is under fire for seemingly posting a photo for the crime scene, and now the department is apologizing. The debacle is playing out down in Osceola, Florida, where Madeline's body was discovered Friday by officials there in a wooded area after she went missing from her home neighboring Orange County last week. On Saturday, a day after she was found, a photo of human remains was reportedly posted to the official Instagram account for the sheriff's office. The photo believed to be confidential image of the crime scene since deleted is said to show body matching her description lying dead on the ground. That's crazy. Now the sheriff's office is telling local news outlet the photo was accidentally included in a post about a community event for seniors. They add, we deeply apologize for confusion. Man, who uploaded that? That's just crazy. The sheriff's office is neither confirming nor denying that that was her body. Somehow, 
this all gets worse, the sheriff's office said, because the same morning the alleged photo was posted on IG, another member of the sheriff's office shared a selfie with Steph Stephen Stearns, the boyfriend of of her, of the mother and the prime suspect. Like, why would you take a selfie with the like? Ugh, these people. This is this is like this is what I was telling my husband today. We were watching Walking Dead. And I was like, honestly, as selfish as we are, we have everything now. I cannot see people being kind because people are evil now. Like, you make light of situations like this. I just, why would you want to take a selfie? I can see you took a picture of the fool. Just sick. Nerva Rodriguez, Rodriguez, I can never say the name, Rodriguez. The OCSD executive director shared the image on her personal Facebook page showing stories being let out in the handcuffs. She reportedly captured her post is if God's love have been poured out over your life, don't allow people to keep you away from what he has prepared for you. Unclear what her intent meant by that. weird in any case it's, i was trying to figure out what is that mean in any case the selfie was reportedly snapped after stars was booked on charges of child pornography and sexually battering a child um yeah sick so the mom's boyfriend killed the little girl the little girl had told her friend she rather live in the woods than with that sicko um i just don't even know I don't know, these boyfriends and these moms, the girlfriends and the dads, it's just sad. So this dad is accused of drugging his daughter's friends with uh, sleepover smoothies. He insisted they drink. He's an Oregon father's facing three charges at his uh, at his house where girls were sleeping over. Last week, 57-year-old Michael Maiden has been charged with three counts of causing another ingest uncontrolled substance. On Saturday, the police were notified that three 12-year-old girls were being treated at the hospital for an unknown prescription drug while at a sleepover. The girls were over through a spa night in a sleeper in a basement. He's accused of giving all the girls mango smoothies, providing them with color reusable straws to distinguish their own drinks. He was allegedly adamant the girls drink out of their own cups and insist that they drink them. But one girl said the smoothies had tiny long sh- chunks sprinkled throughout the top. One of the children re- reported feeling woozy, hot and clumsy after her smoothie, saying she went into a thick, deep sleep. Another girl, however, didn't like the smoothies and barely drank any. She told the police that he came downstairs more than once during the night and tried to separate two of the girls from each other as they slept. She claimed she could feel him watching her by his presence as she kept her eyes shut, pretending to be asleep before saying, doing tests to make sure you weren't awake. According to the girl, he put his finger under her nose as to see if she was soundly asleep. Asleep. He then waved his hand in front of her face. When he left the room, the girl began frantically texting her mother mom please pick me up and say i had a family emergency i don't feel safe she allegedly messaged her mom at 143 i might not respond but please come get me crying emoji please pick me up please she eventually reached to a family friend who picked her up the girl's mother didn't notify the parents of other girls who showed up around 3 a.m to get their children he allegedly told them to come back in the morning but they insisted on taking the girls home yeah, that's crazy. Thank God one of the girls was smart enough to 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 get a hold of somebody. So he pretty much put Valium, Xanax, and Clonopin in their smoothies. What was that? Why would you let your y'all y'all see these news stories so much, and y'all still let y'all kids spend a night with people? It's just weird to me. It's weird to me. Like, when are, are, are people going to learn this stuff? I never let my my son spend a night over people's house. People spent the night at our house, but I wasn't even a fan of that. Ugh, sick old people, man. Uh, 
Usher is over in Bali hanging out with Russell Simmons, getting some R and R, I guess. Maybe some advice for real. Jonathan Majors and Megan Good are still going strong. They're still in love. Russell Wilson is cut by the Broncos. So me and my husband were talking about where he could possibly go. We're sending the Washington Commanders. Uh, what else do we say? Now everything is the Jets. And I forget where else. But he'll find a home. Russell's up out of there. He got to keep his money. Chili is a grandmother at 53. She welcomes a baby girl granddaughter. Chili from TLC, if you don't know who that is. A Tesla Cybertruck crashed into a Beverly Hills hotel. Elon Musk weighs in. What is he going to do? Pay for them to get their car fixed? Uh, let me see. Airlines passengers are suing Boeing for a billion dollars following the mid-flight door blowout, which I knew that was going to happen. They literally try to give them people $1,500 to call it a day. So a man who allegedly hit Terrell Owens with his car last year at their basketball game is reportedly facing two criminal charges, according to TMZ. Radcliffe is now charged with two counts of felony assault with a deadly weapon for allegedly ramming his vehicle into Owens' knee last October. I'm going to check this video page right quick before we get into reddits because every time I watch this, I'll be like, I don't like any of this. Charles Barkley says he will punch any black man wearing a Trump mugshot t-shirt. Please chunk punch me, Charles, so I can get paid. Yeah. More than anybody else, the black population. It's incredible. You see black people walking around with my mugshot. You know, they do shirts. When you heard that, what did you think? Big sigh. First of all, I'm just going to say this. If I see a black person walking around with Trump mugs, I'm going to punch him in the face. Charles. I know, Gil. Charles. Gil, Gil. Gil, You you really can't say that because, A, you don't mean that. Oh, I mean that sincerely. (laughs) I'm going to just tell you something. And then you will be arrested for assault. And then what? I'm going to bail then myself what? out and go celebrate. <laughs> Charles, you know how many people going to be having them shirts on just so they can get paid for you to do that? of these are going to be pretty much trash. Yeah. Unless we want to watch a mama chimp beating her kid for throwing rocks at people. Even the chimps be having their kids in check. This woman left her son of 18 years to be with his, her husband of 18 years to be with his son. Wow.
kid boy gets caught and a dude holds him to the police come. These kid boys are the worst. They go around stealing people's cars. The worst. Alright, let's get into these reddits. I knew that that, that page is it's just too too much trash on that page man every now and then it'll be a good thing but it just really don't all right what's gotten so expensive that you no longer purchase it shoot a lot i try to not purchase anything at the movies for sure but my husband loves it i can't it's just be too expensive never buy chips unless it's buy one get one free Subway, even the six inch subs are seven dollars before the chips and the drink. Good thing I don't eat nasty Subway. Netflix. I go through my apps every day trying to figure out which app I want to cut. Like for real. Like I look at all these apps like like Prime is a really good contender. I'm really weighing it. I'm weighing it because I'll try to find stuff to watch on Prime. But it's like I don't know. Somebody said McDonald's, concert tickets, nail salons. I really like hate nail salons, but I go in the summer. I go a lot, and sometimes in the winter, but I don't go a lot. Even the IHOP is expensive. Houses don't even get me started. Red meat. Literally everything in the last three years. That sums it up. What chain restaurant hasn't gone down in quality? Hmm. That's hard. Because I feel like a lot of restaurants are hit and miss. Like, I get bored with restaurants a lot. Chains, anyway. Somebody said Popeyes. Mm, even Popeyes has some off days, man. Waffle House, I will agree. Waffle House is still slapping. Waffle House got the best bacon and sausage of any place around. Domino's. My husband likes Little Caesar, shockingly. Culver's. I haven't ate Culver's in a while. Freddy's. I know a lot of people that like Freddy's. Jersey Mike's. In and out. Mm. In and out tastes different at different places. Longhorn. Longhorn still holds strong. Yeah, they got some old faithfuls in there. Taco Bell. My husband ate that nasty crap today. Raising Canes. I haven't had that in a while, but my son loves that stuff. What is the most obvious sign a couple won't last long? That they argue about the little dumb stuff. Like, if you tell me you got an argument with your significant other over some real dumb that's so trivial, you ain't gonna make it. And if you just, like, you expect to have this cookie cutter life, you ain't gonna make it. You ain't gonna make it. I always find couples who post about how much they love each other on social media break up pretty quick. Could be true. When they act as though they don't like or respect you when they when you point out that they're that you they're being too sensitive, they casually show signs that they don't respect each other. Could be with a lot of eye rolling or mocking or condescending laugh, casually saying you're so stupid. Yeah, if you embarrass people, even though I find like them couples, they take forever to break up, but because one is so broken down, but they eventually break up. Different argument styles shows contempt for the spouse, talk stuff to each other about their friends. Them dudes be so beat down that they, them dudes really don't leave. If you get a, if you break up what their spirit, they'll stay forever. After I was married about three years, a coworker that had been married for a few months asked how long we lasted before we ran out of stuff to talk about. Yeah, when you run out of stuff to talk about with your spouse, that's, that's pretty sad. No conflict resolution. Alright, let's 
get into the am I the a hoes? This one's interesting. Am I the a hoe for breaking up with my girlfriend because she slept with another guy while making me wait? So my girlfriend and I have been together for about about a year and a half and I just started a new job I met this male co-worker and we became friends I invited him over to my place and he recognized my girlfriend we don't officially live together but she spends a lot of time at my place you can guess where this is going after co-worker left my girlfriend and I get to talking basically she slept with him while dating me and made me wait she said that our relationship was going to be special and she wanted to wait and that sex with my co-worker was just a one night stand I totally believe because leave because I knew I was going to say things that I couldn't take back. A few days later, after I calmed down and thought it through, I broke over her. She kept repeating what she said about how she wants more with me, but I told her that I feel like I'm not attracted to her, at least not as much as others. She kept saying that I was special. Basically, I said I can't be that special. She preferred to sleep with a one-night stand than me. Um, and it, I don't think this counts as cheating. This happened within the first month of us dating. We became official after the first month, so so 100% should have clarified that. Regardless, she was like still having a whole phase, but she like put you on like this little like, like I can see if people are just celibate, but like well, she was still having her little whole phase, and then she was like, but you're special. Yeah, she 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 ain't gonna be loyal, bro. She keeping you because you must got a good job and some stability. She still might be creeping out later on in a relationship. Somebody said, not the a-hole. I'm pretty sure it's going to be all not the a-hole. No, I dated a girl like this in college. She had been a sex fiend when we met, but then became super religious and born again virgin until her ex came around. Then she just made a mistake. Run away. Yup, don't be the main ones. They they change and then somebody come around and get to bring a little whole face back out. What? I ain't reading that because that's wrong. This is crazy. I'm on the a ho for telling my friend that I slept with his disabled younger sister. John and I are both in our 40s. He was my friend through middle school and most of high school. We hung out together and played the same sports, did church, summer camp, etc. Basically, we grew up together. I also knew and spent time with his sister, Mary. Mary has cerebral palsy and uses an electric wheelchair. After graduating, John went to university while I stayed back home to work in my father's business and go to community college. Mary also went to college and we ended up hanging out a lot. John and his family liked the idea of me being like a big brother to Mary. Mary and I got closer we began having sex. We weren't exactly dating, but it was a lot of fun for both of us because Mary's family is very protective of her. We both agreed to keep our relationship secret. Eventually, her family found out, and there was an ugly confrontation with me and them. They accused me of taking advantage of Mary because of my famili- familiarity with her and because she was disabled. Mary insisted she wanted the relationship, that, that but they dismissed her views like they did John. John was especially angry at me when trying to start a fist fight. My father got involved and things eventually settled down, but my friendship with John and his family is over. I ended up leaving the area if I got my associates degree and moved out of state to live with my mother. So decades later, I've stayed in contact with Mary, but only through basic pleasantries with John and family are still connected with my father. Two weeks ago, Mary came to my city and we met for lunch. It was a company event with her co-workers and vendor, but I still enjoy seeing her again. So after so many years, we continued the evening at her hotel and I ended up spending the night with her. You can't get away from Mary. I don't know what she doing. She willing that. Anyway, this Saturday morning, I woke up to find a message from John. We barely communicated in the last 20 years, so I was startled to see his name. Apparently, he got around to look at my pictures. Mary had posted from lunch and saw me sitting next to her. It was like we had teleported back, teleported back 20 years ago. The same accusations and angry insults got flung at me. He dredged up old stuff I had forgotten about years ago. He ended his message with warning me not to spend time with Mary. I was outraged by his message were two grown men, not high school kids. Anyway, Mary's able-minded enough to attend an out-of-town work conference on her own, but they think she's not capable of deserving a romantic relationship. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, she see, I mean, poor Mary, not only does she have cerebral palsy, but her, but she has a feeling that cock blocks her. I mean, Mary, listen, I do know some women with cerebral palsy that be popping that, that will, popping willies, popping that thing. I'm not trying to be, you know, but Mary clearly, quite contrary, is, uh, She's she she's zillion and alien. I mean, uh, I mean y'all not friends no more. I wouldn't like it because I get the family side. If I had a disabled sister, I wouldn't want none of my friends hooking up with my sister. I wouldn't want any of my friends hooking up with my my normal. And I, and I say normal, loosely, siblings, because they might not be physically, but mentally. I'm, I'm just playing. But I just think that's weird. Friends should not hook up with people's siblings. It's too freaking weird. over telling my wife I'm not going to support her being a stay-at-home mom. Mm. Me and my wife were in our 30s. We met in our 20s. One of the main things that really made me like her was that she kept working for what she wanted and wasn't really dependent on anyone. So for context, I come from money on my dad's side. My mom is middle class, but not, not my wife. While we both work, our daughter is, is with my mom since she's retired. My wife pays my mother to watch her. So the problem is that she wants to be a stay-at-home mom. I told her no as I wasn't supporting that. She asked why. I said I prefer to work with parents and it gives us more income. She said I could support it on my own, which I could. Still told her no. She asked again if she wants to be a, one of the those Instagram moms to, to do more with kids. I told her I would consider it. She's been bugging me about, her, about it. I told her she wanted to do part-time she could but she would have to take on more chores in the house she said no as she would still be working on instagram i told her instagram is going to pay less and than five dollars an hour at first so that's not a real job she's been crying and bugging me about it for a while i asked one of my friends they said they wouldn't want a financial leash either which is kind of mean but i can't see that so she wants to be there for her ch- ch- children to nurture them, to spend quality time with them, and give, give them undivided attention. Somebody said, or does she want to be Instagram mom? Yeah, I mean, I, li- I like to hear her side because although you're saying Instagram mom, I mean, it's only so much Instagram blogging you can do. A lot of people are saying if it's Instagram mom, no. Somebody said, not the a-hole, a TikTok mom child is currently missing after she constantly posted her child online. I wouldn't even allow her to post children online. That's too dangerous. A lot of people do not want the whole social media mom. Staying at home, just daycare is expensive. Like, luckily you guys do have your mother-in-law to babysit, but she was staying at home just to raise and, and... homeschool i don't think that's the end of the world but especially until the the kid is like you know whatever let's read one more let's make it a good one Am I the a-hole for telling my biological father he doesn't get to play father now? I am 32 and have barely had a relationship with my 58-year-old male father. I would think he's a male because it takes men to make babies. But anyway, my parents split up when I was eight months old. My biological father was a drug addict and so did when I was a child in my teens. However, even though this man holds an astounding arrest record, the court still determined that he had visitation rights and if my mom did not allow him access, he could take her to court for more. Not that he would actually use them. I maybe saw him once a year if I was lucky. Though he would call and make plans often and just not show up, I can remember distinctly one Christmas sitting on the front step crying for hours on end with my bags packed waiting for him to arrive 
He promised that he would. He never did. Refusing to allow my mother to bring me inside until my fingers were almost purple. This man was also brought me in a home with ceilings in which he sold and sat and did drugs. We would get to spend a week with him, and he would be in the back room for almost the entire time. More often than not, it was his girlfriend that was taking care of us. I distinctly remember I had gotten, yeah, yeah, let's get down to it. Let's go to the fast forward part. Fast forward to being 27 years old. I've not had a relationship with him. And all of a sudden, I get a call from my aunt telling me that I need to help him because he's trying to get sober after beating up my 74-year-old grandfather with a broken neck. Started to reconnect with him under the condition that he stayed sober. That didn't last. He called me on my birthday while he was drunk and told me that the only thing he ever did to me was stay away. I screamed at him that I wish that he had actually stayed away because he ruins any opportunity of me having a normal childhood. I have nightmares from the things I experienced in this home. The relationship I have with my stepfather was strained for many years because of him. This man tells me that I owe him the opportunity to be a father. I told him that he had a... I can just wrap this up. No, you're not the a-hole. I wouldn't even try. Like... I don't, you know, and I, I am, I'm, I'm rare in this, right? And maybe because I experience like a lot at a young age, I don't like giving people two, three, four, five chances. I give you three chances, and then after that, and I do count. Then you're done. Then you're done because I have to live a normal, functioning wife. I have to be someone's mother and someone's wife. So I can't be dealing with somebody that is toxic, that do not help me pay my bills, or that did not come out of me. I just can't. So like my my level, my boundaries are totally different from most. But I never give these people. They constantly give people chance after chance after chance, and you know that they not gonna change. Like. Do you feel like you're going to get into heaven faster or something? I don't, I don't know. I just, I'm very confused on that. Cause like, at the end of the day, like I forgive people, but like, if you've hurt me or caused me any kind of trauma, I get too triggered and I can't, I can't be around you. I cannot, no matter what. And I'm just, I'm just made different like that. I guess. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't even like forcing myself, but I won't force other people, like, to be around that. If they, if you choose to be around them people, knock yourself out. All that to say, no, you're not the a-hole. You don't have to give people time, especially as a parent. Like, if you F up as a parent, I say this all the time, if you F up your parenting, don't be surprised if your kids don't give you another chance. Because do you really deserve it? Like, for real. That's my question. Why do parents think they deserve it if they weren't there in the first place? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's been the show today, y'all. Like I said, a little bit more better today. The stories were still kind of dry, but we make do with what we can do. Y'all stay safe, and I'll be back tomorrow.